Join Sarah Weiss in the infinite field of energetic aliveness and heart-centered wisdom. This is the Earth Love Spirit Podcast. Welcome to the Earth Love Spirit Podcast. I'm Sarah Weiss, and today we have a wonderfully generous guest, generous in heart, soul, and information, as well as energy. His name is Joshua Bloom, and he has developed quantum energy transformation. And today we'll be talking about quantum energy transformation for empaths. So today is going to be a discussion between two quantum empaths, myself and Josh. So today we're going to go over how to access the quantum field, how to connect with the earth core chakra to balance your energy, how to put yourself into a transformation mode to make quick instant shifts in your being, and how to raise your energy frequency so you always live in the highest vibration of love. Doesn't that sound generous and wonderful? So Josh is also going to lead us through a practice to help us balance and raise the frequency of our energy. So help me welcome Joshua Bloom. So hello, Joshua. Welcome to the Earth Love Spirit Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here because we get to dig into some really neat things about quantum. So this is exciting. Thank you. It is really exciting. And you've developed this quantum transformation process that we want to go into. And I'd like to give the listeners to this podcast a little background on who you are and how you got into what you're doing. So if you could give us kind of the, the down and dirty story of how you became a quantum healer and where you came from, what, what star system or whether it's New Jersey or, or a plant, different planet, let us know and uh, start us off with that. Well, I'm sure I'm from a different planet. <laughs> we, we can start right. off with that. I'm an indigo child, and I'm probably so many other things you can put in that same category. Um, I really think that uh, this work found me. You know, it's, it's less that I found the work. You know, I, I didn't grow up when I was a kid saying, oh, I'm going to be a healing professional and a transformation specialist and be into this quantum stuff. You know, I didn't, you know, that wasn't, you know, when I was a kid, it was probably what, you know, a firefighter, a, a police officer or something. <laughs> you, know, that's a, you know, something else. But as I grew up, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And um, my father would always tell me, you know, don't, don't worry about it. You don't need to know now. And I'm like, I need to know soon, you know, don't you think? You know? <laughs> he says, no, nah, don't worry about it. You don't need to know now. And I'm like, okay. So he was right because it absolutely found me. But it found me in a very interesting way. I had just moved to the Washington, D.C. area to be near my brother um, in my early 20s. And then I decided to... Um, you know, lived there, and it was great, and it was, a, it was a wonderful time to be in that area. And then I started to get anxiety. And this is like um, every year the anxiety would just get worse, and um, I would, wouldn't know when it would hit. I would just start to feel anxious all of a sudden, and I'd feel very uncomfortable a lot. And so I thought, oh, I have an anxiety problem, so I really need to work on this. So I started to study. I studied as much as I could to figure out how can I resolve my problem. So I studied and studied over 20 different healing modalities, uh, working to correct my problem, and uh, not much was happening. I did, I did a lot of great learning. I learned a whole lot of stuff. I started to help other people because I had, I had gained a great amount of knowledge, and um, even in the area of quantum and so I was really excited, but I didn't really make a big change for myself at all. I felt kind of stuck. Um, there were many days I wasn't even functional. I mean, it was really bad. So when I was anxious, and sometimes I'd be anxious for hours, other times I would not be anxious at all, and all of a sudden I would just get an anxiety attack for no apparent reason at all. Nothing was happening. I just freak out. I guess I was, I got really good at freaking out. <laughs> you know, I, I was well practiced, let's just say. 
Um, not exactly something I am proud of, but it, it, it happened that way for me. And one day I went into a hypnosis center. I thought, well, maybe they would be able to help me. And although I knew about hypnosis and, and I studied well beyond the understanding of hypnosis, I figured maybe that maybe it would be something I could focus on and it would be helpful. So when I went into the hypnosis center, um, I had them take me through a session and, and, and go through whatever they thought would help me. And after the first session, I knew immediately that they couldn't help me. I knew that because I knew more than they did by a whole lot. And I thought, well, if they can't help me, maybe I could help them. And so I offered to help them. And this lady thought, wow, what an opportunity. You know, this, this guy is coming to my center and maybe he could be helpful. And so I started working with their clients. And I used a lot of the tools that I knew, even in the area of quantum, because I knew that stuff at that point. And I started to get results with people that seemed a little bit out of the ordinary and kind of amazing or actually definitely amazing. A woman would come in with, uh, for example, um, anxiety, and uh, she would leave without anxiety in about 40 minutes. And, uh, you know, I would go home with my anxiety, so it felt very uncomfortable and very disappointing because I worked so hard to uh, help this lady, and I worked so hard to help myself, but still I wasn't getting, I wasn't getting the result uh, for myself either. I was just getting the result for these people. So somebody else would come in with migraine headaches that were like debilitating cluster migraine headaches. One session, done. No more migraine headaches, just gone. One lady in four minutes, her fibromyalgia just vanished. And when she came in limping, she left, out with, she left without the limp. I mean, if I didn't see it with my own eyes, I think it was like nuts, you know? I was like, what is going on here? <laughs> yeah, know? what was going on there? <laughs> yeah, so I felt like this is a really interesting thing. And then I said to myself, well, if these people are changing and shifting and all that, why, why not me? Why can't I eliminate my own anxiety? So that was, that was kind of the, uh, the, the, the feelings I was getting is I, I must know something. These people are doing so well. What about me? I also noticed that other people noticed. So the, there are other hypnotherapists there, and they were wondering, well, what am I doing? Or what is Joshua doing? Because, you know, they get a testimonial maybe, you know, once or twice a month, maybe, you know, at the most once a week. I'm getting them almost daily. And so they're all like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I always believed anything was possible, and um, I was able to prove that anything is possible through this experience. And then one day I realized when I'm helping myself, I'm not doing what I do with clients. I do, it, I do the same things, but not exactly the way that I do it with clients. So I started to realize that there was a difference. And I needed to work with myself as though I was the client. And I did. And I started to get the results just like my clients were getting. And my anxiety vanished just like theirs did. And I was... Um, no longer in that debilitating place where, you know, one day I wasn't functional and the next day I was. I just eliminated the anxiety and felt so much better and felt so much stronger and my life changed. And then I, from that point forward, I knew how to teach it. So I started to teach it a lot more deeply so that people understand when you engage in a specific way, you can get amazing results. But if you engage the same things, but in, a, in the wrong way, you, know, the, you just don't get results. So I learned a lot from really not getting results as much as I learned from getting them. That's an incredible story because that is the teaching that most healers need to hear. I mean, yeah. that is classic and it happens to all of us and it is a message that's really needed for our time. So what were you doing to do with your clients for healing? What was your process? Well, basically what I did was I got people to get out of their head and into a strength beyond what they've normally or ever felt before. Mm -hmm. And when they get into that strength, we eliminate the fear. And that's the one thing that holds everybody back 
that we won't go there, wherever there is, to that place that I need to go in order to, to clear whatever it is that needs to leave or heal, right? So they, they, they won't go there because of the fear. So we get people into a place where they feel confident. They feel unstoppable. They feel like it's so strong that it's a no-brainer for them to just let this energy go. And I've done this many times with women who have been raped, which is a very, very painful and difficult uh, thing for a woman to be raped. Mm -hmm. And I work with many of them, and almost always it's been a one-session experience, and it's just, just healed. And that's because I know how to get people into their strong place, very strong, and when they're there, I know how to instruct them to move the energy at the root of that issue and allow that to process because it's unprocessed energy and information that's causing the triggers to like, continually trigger them for everything. And if you think about a woman in that situation, there would be a lot of safety issues. There would be a lot of um, fear issues. There would be a lot of, lot of things attached to the things that are attached, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And so um, we, we, we get to the root of all of that, we release it, and then they can live a normal life without being fearful of that incident. It's like the incident never occurred, even though they remember that it did. It's no longer, the, the charge is completely gone. So the trigger is gone. And yeah. So, and so I know you work with the earth core chakra. Is that part of the process for helping to strengthen your clients? Yeah, so the earth core chakra is very powerful. Um, we use the root chakra to access the earth core chakra. And when we um, access the, the chakra system like that, we get into the body in a very different way. So there's a different level of understanding of earth connection and grounding. So you could be grounded, in, for example, by engaging in a yoga class, and that's very nice, and it, and it works very nicely. But we're talking about a much deeper experience of grounding. So when you ground so deeply, you actually, what we call, get into the body. And what that really means is when you're grounded, that doesn't mean that you're in your body. So because of stress, and because of the way we live our life and because of all sorts of things going on, especially times like today, uh, what we realize is that our higher self literally leaves the body. And what that means is, although it's still attached to you, it's just not in your body. It might be floating up above you. Um, it could be, you know, just trying to sort of escape. <laughs> mm -hmm. The higher self only really likes very high frequency energy. So when you experience fear, depression, or anything that's negative in your life, your higher self says, uh, I need a vacation from this. <laughs> this isn't for me. So your higher self leaves the body in order to reach higher ground, sort of like a dog knows that naturally too, right? The dog mm -hmm. goes and reaches higher ground when it knows to try to be safe during certain things that happen in life. So when we get into the body, what that means is your higher self gets down into the body where the higher self is all the way down to the feet and it's literally fully in your body. And when you are completely and fully in your body, it is when you can actually be present, be in the moment and experience the beingness of who you are. So most people are never in their body and most people never know who they are because knowing who you are is a feeling and not a um this this kind of intellectual thing we think that it is <laughs> you're like who am i oh i'm this or i'm that no it's it's a feeling it doesn't have any words so that when you feel the essence of who you are you're like yeah that's me i know who that is Josh, uh, what you're speaking about is very familiar to me. Like I said, when we were talking before the show, we're kind of twin beings. We must come from the same planet. Um, <laughs> can, you, can you remember the first time that you felt that connection to your being where you were connected to that earth, earth 
core chakra and your higher being inhabited your being to the point where you felt whole and confident and secure. Do you remember that? Yeah. Well, I, I first have to remember that that wasn't the way that I was living my life at one time. Mm -hmm. You know, I really wasn't connected and I hardly felt that if ever felt that connection. So I felt that connection probably, you know, like 15 years ago or so. Um, actually, maybe more like 20 years ago. But when I felt that connection, I wasn't able to keep it. Um, I was able to feel it and know that it was there, but it was very difficult for me to get grounded in any way. Actually, I had to use other people's ground in order for me to be okay. So, for example, if I was traveling or if I was, you know, outside or wherever I was, it really wouldn't matter. And I needed to be ground, grounded. I couldn't get grounded on my own. So I had to actually energetically take somebody else's ground that's around me and use their ground or I would, or I would probably have a really huge anxiety attack and flip out. Um, <laughs> you know, that's, that's what would have happened to me. But after a while... I started to have a relationship with myself differently and started to understand that, yeah, who I am, not what I do, but who I am is the energy of that deep connection and that it's good for me to get to have a communication and a relationship with that me. And so, of course, I, I, I worked with that in a beautiful way and realized um, that you can actually get that very quickly now. I mean, you know, a long time ago, it was very difficult for me because I didn't know what I was doing. But now I've got some, you know, experience behind me. I know a lot of what I'm doing now. So you can instantly actually access this higher you and this higher energy and raise your energy frequency in like two minutes. So and anybody can do it. So that's the power of quantum energy transformation, that you don't have to um, struggle with it like I did, because I can show you and teach you exactly how to get there. See, I love that you call your, your process quantum energy transformation, and you don't call it quantum en energy healing per se because <laughs> I love you. She said that. <laughs> yeah I mean it's real I, I really vibe with that because you're really helping someone facilitate their own transformation and their own release and r the raising of their energy so that they shed the issue or the illness rather than push it away you know try to get rid of it um, yeah. you're really taking people through a process that puts the power in them rather sure. than you. Absolutely. I, I, I'm like invisible in the process. You know, that's important because it is about people learning how to engage their own energy and me supporting that person to teach them to do that for themselves is a very different thing than me getting them to be there. Because mm -hmm. I can do that. That's not a problem. I can do a session or work with a group of people or, or in any way that I want to do it and get anybody to experience anything. But the problem with that is they'll always need me. And so I decided that I would choose to be invisible in the process and they would do it themselves and I'd be their biofeedback machine. I would teach them exactly um, where they might not recognize it or might not be getting in there in the best way to be centered and calm and collected and, and teach them that way so that, so that they would also create a relationship with their body and their higher self like I did because that relationship is priceless. Without that relationship, you just don't have a way to find that connection again. It's like, it's like when you go on a trip, you know, you go from here to there. Well, how do you go on a trip to get to your higher self, to connect to that you, to really feel connected to yourself? Well, if I do it for you and you get there, you're like, oh, that really is great. That's, <laughs> and it is great. But if you can do that for yourself, you could do it for yourself today. You could do it for yourself tomorrow. You could do it for yourself in an hour from now if you needed to. And that is priceless because if you could do it yourself, 
You don't need anybody else to do it for you. And that is, is I've been teaching that for many years because a lot of people were, were, were um, wondering, you know, why don't you just, uh, you know, do it like a healer? And I'm like, because I don't look at it like that. I, I look at it that I'm the facilitator. I come from the facilitation perspective because we all need to learn how to be our own healer, in a sense, our own uh, transformationalist. Uh, we have to be our own um, connection for ourselves. Because I knew what it was like not even having a ground. And had I not learned to do it myself, I would have to take everybody else's ground around me just so I could be okay for a moment, right? So I don't want anybody else to go through that. I, cause I, so I teach them how to be in their body. So there is a very different experience between the understanding of transformation and healing. And I learned it about um, a little over 20 years ago when I was teaching a class and I was creating the name uh, Quantum Energy Transformation. And I was uh, working with uh, my class, who, and I said I wanted to come up with this name, and we, were, we, were, we came up with Quantum Energy Healing and, and, and Quantum Energy, like a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> we had lots of cool names we were talking about. And one of my students says, you should call it Quantum Energy Transformation. And I said, oh. And everybody in the class was like, oh, they were like, oh, too. They were like, yeah, that sounds great. And I said, so you like that one? And they're like, yeah, we like that one a lot. And they explained why they liked it and how it was connecting to uh, their inner being differently than healing. And I said, wow, this is, this is outrageous. So we're going to call it quantum energy transformation. They were very happy and that it was a life-changing moment for myself as well as for the modality and as well as for everybody in the room because everybody understood at that moment that there was definitely a difference in the energy of the words. Yes, it brought a whole different uh, frequency of, of transformation of healing into the world through you. Absolutely. Yes. Kind of cool. Yes. So so let's let's move over into the empath area given that you and I are both empaths, mm -hmm. both quantum empaths. <laughs> you um, and so here we go. And how are you working with empaths to help them, you know, realize their gifts, to um, go beyond the overwhelm and, and find themselves? Well, empaths are very interesting beings. Mm -hmm. And I know, so as you said, I am, I am also an empath. And we're interesting because there was no manual that was given that says, oh, you know, you're an empath, just so you know. And, you know, now that you know that, um, these are, this is the book you need to read that says, hey, this is what you do to survive in this, in, on this planet, on this planet Earth that we're on, um, because we probably all came from somewhere else. And so mm -hmm. this, this experience of empaths being on the planet is that we're very sensitive I mean, I can feel the energy outside, and I'm, and I'm inside. You know, <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I can sense what's happening um, on a phone call with someone, and they're in another country. I can, I can sense it without um, any, any, any kind of tools. I just, just, I'm so sensitive. I feel that. And sensitive people have a lot of gifts. We have lots of abilities to be able to have amazing intuition, um, transformation abilities, and so many other things that come with that too. But the thing is, is that because we're so sensitive, everything is, um, I guess, over the top for us. I remember a long time ago, I was using an EEG machine. It just came out and I was excited to use it. And I had a friend of mine who is also using the EEG machine with me. So I'm sitting at the EEG machine, and it's showing that I'm relaxed. And this is at a point in my life where I wasn't relaxed, <laughs> okay? I was kind of anxious. Not, maybe not kind of anxious. I was really anxious, okay? And I'm sitting there, and the thing is telling me that I'm relaxed. And I'm like, well, this thing is broken. <laughs> <You know? laughs> this, this cannot be true. This machine is telling me I'm relaxed, and I'm sitting here hoping that my heart would stop, you know, bothering me and, and bumbling and all sorts of things that, you know, the anxiety I was feeling in my stomach, and could that, like, go away, you know? And, and it's telling me that I'm not feeling any of those things. And so 
So then I um, had my friend do it. And now she, I said, how are you feeling? She said she was relaxed. And I'm like, okay, great. So she's there. She puts you know, the equipment on, and it's showing the exact opposite. She is feeling relaxed, but the, the machine is telling her that she's really overstressed. Hmm. And so I'm like, well, you think you're, you're, you're relaxed, and it says you're stressed. I think that I'm stressed, and it says that I'm relaxed. So I called the company. I had, to, I had to tell them that the machine was broken. <laughs> so <laughs> I did. I really did. I called them and I spoke to the guy who developed the device. And I said, I think your machine is broken. I'm sitting here with a woman who says she's relaxed. And it says that she's like freaking out. And I'm saying I am freaking out. And yet it says that I'm relaxed. And this changed my life. This literally changed my life, what, what he said to me. He said, what your feeling, Joshua, is that you are very sensitive to just a little bit of anxiety. You don't even need a lot. You can sense it from a very teeny weeny small amount. So the computer says that you're relaxed because for the most part you are. You're just feeling a little bit of that energy to you feels over the top. Your friend is not relaxed, but she's trained herself to, to shut it down. So she's not feeling it. Not that it's not happening. She's not feeling it because she turned it off. Isn't that a brilliant moment? Wow. Oh my God. It was a brilliant moment because it literally changed my life to realize that, oh, I don't have an anxiety problem. I have a sensitivity problem. That's a very different problem. Yes. Yes. Wow, that was life altering. In I mean, just to know that, and then I realized, well, my friend was she was she really in trouble? <laughs> 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 Woo! <laughs> she needs she needs something because it really did not look good for her. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure you helped her out then, right? <laughs> I did, I did, and she she um, learned to, she le so when I first started with her, she would tell me that she couldn't feel anything, and I said, well, I couldn't either when I started, because I had turned it off many, many years ago, and when I turned it on, that's when I realized, I didn't know I turned it on, by the way, but I did, and when I turned it on, that's when I started having anxiety, so when she um she had turned all this, this, this ability to feel off and she wanted to have that ability to feel because she wanted to know, you know, what she was feeling better. She wanted to move the energy in the body to create cellular transformation. She wanted to do a lot of things in healing, but she couldn't feel anything. So that was kind of hard. So I told her, you'll be able to feel, we're just going to work on it a little bit. And she, she did not have any faith that I was right. <laughs> she had, she's like, I'm never going to be able to do it. And then there were other people in the class with her because she came into a class. And so everybody else is like, oh, Joshua, only you can do this. We can't do this. And I'm like, I'm telling you, you can do this. Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah. You know, they didn't believe me. But anyway, so I work with this group of people. And I taught them how to let go, how to, how to sort of turn on their feelings again in a safe way. Because, you know, you know, if you feel fear, you're not going to turn it on. <laughs> okay, so I taught them how to turn it on in a safe way and to feel um, those emotions again that they were stopping and to get back into their bodies and to feel strong, um, unstoppable even. And so they started to feel energy. And it was really interesting because – they all, they all came back to another class and they said, Joshua, I can feel the energy of somebody else's session, for example. <laughs> you know, and I could feel the energy from when you're working with somebody and I'm in the audience of that. Mm -hmm. And they can feel it. And I'm like, yeah, I told you you could. <laughs> and they're like, well, we didn't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I know. But, it, you know, and I felt the same way in my life. I thought that I would never, ever in my life get rid of the anxiety. I never thought that I'd be able to do it because who thinks when you're in that place that it's possible, you know, it might be possible for somebody else, but maybe not me. You know, that's kind of what most people think I believe. Right. Right. 
So, um, okay, so with empaths who you're now defining as someone who has a super sensitivity, but not necessarily tuned into the actual beauty and core of their being, but there there's kind of a magnification of their yeah. of their experience of being overwhelmed and and picking up uh, so much that they lose themselves. So so when you work with empaths, how do you guide them back to sensing their own being in a way that feels grounded and balanced? That's a great question. Well, first of all, an empath needs to know where they're actually picking up the information from, because we think as empaths that it's all situational. For example, I'm in a situation that scares me, so therefore I feel scared, right? That has nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not saying they're not going to feel scared in a scary situation. I'm just saying that's not where the most of the information is coming from. It's not situational that's, that's coming in. So an empath will pick, like I said, I can experience um, what's outside even though I'm inside. An empath will pick up information from a wider um, area, a, wider ter a wider territory of, of space. Um, so they might be experiencing something outside or even in the country or even in a different country. Mm -hmm. they, can, they can experience it. I remember myself, um, I knew that September 11th was coming before it did. Um, and I was freaking out. I remember that days before I was freaking out, knowing that something wasn't good. I didn't know what was going on, but man, was I freaking out. And I'm thinking at first, oh, I have anxiety again, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I, I, I learned through the years to trust when I start to feel anxious, it's not, it's not that I'm anxious, I'm getting a message. So an empath is going to pick up what's happening in the world and what's happening in the spirit world, which is the other side. So an empath can pick up information from many, many different places, even other planets um, and other um, energies that aren't where they are in the moment. Because in a quantum experience, all time is happening simultaneously. Everything is happening all at once. Where you are for an empath doesn't matter because you're everywhere. Mm -hmm. So when we think of it from that perspective, an empath is getting overloaded with lots and lots and lots of information that they don't know they're receiving. So fear is a big thing because there's a lot of things happening in the world. And you get scared of something that may not even be happening in your moment, the moment that you're experiencing it. It's happening maybe somewhere else in the world or it's going to be happening soon or it's happening to a family member in which you're connected to or somebody else that you might know. But sometimes it's not well defined for an empath to know what it is yet. It, you know, it comes in and then, then they wait a little bit and says, oh, I get it now, that's what it was, you know. Mm -hmm. But it may not be so obvious in the beginning. So when I work with an empath, I want them to first understand that it is not the situational things that are the most impactful in what they're picking up, that it's an energy thing, and that the energy that they're picking up is, is valid. Because, you know, as an empath when we're growing up and we say, oh, I'm feeling funny, people say, no, you shouldn't be feeling that way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. You're dismissed immediately and made to feel crazy. Right. <laughs> what do you mean you're feeling that? That's, yeah. that's crazy. Mm -hmm. just, just, just relax. You'll be fine. You know? Right. right. <laughs> I mean, when I was a kid, we had ghosts in the house. I didn't know we had ghosts until I saw them. And then that freaked me out. Um, and then I turned that off because I was like, oh, my God. Uh, the worst part was when I was in my basement and I could hear my name being called and nobody other than me was in the house. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's happening? <laughs> it's very funny. It, it is. And, and we all have those experiences. And how many people have those without anyone knowing about it? People are sitting there with all these experiences in their being with no one to guide them. No one to right. help validate them and help them well, understand. Well, you can't say anything. Right. What are you, you going to say? Oh, I saw somebody in my room last night? <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, it's totally being silenced. Um, yeah. 
and it's like a jail. It's like you're, mm-hmm. you're, you can't talk to anybody about it, and, and then you're, and you have nobody that you can say, hey, listen, I've got some things going on that kind of seem odd, and, <laughs> and I don't know what to do with it, you know, and they don't necessarily know that it's, um, that it's uh, what, what it exactly is sometimes. They just know that it's, you know, something that you shouldn't say or just shouldn't talk about. Uh, so I, I know for me, um, I couldn't talk about it until I, you know, got to, to the point of in my healing and transformation that I, I needed to let go of what people think. You know, that was a big one for me because I cared a lot about what people thought. Oh, my God, that was oh, a big one. Oh, we do. We do, especially ah. if you're an empath because you know what people think of you. <laughs> yeah, well, that's very, very true. Very, very true. So it gets very difficult because you're feeling all of that all the time. Mm-hmm. I remember uh, many years ago, um, I put my arm around my mom and gave her a hug. And I said, oh, are you okay? And she says, why do you ask? I said, because I could feel this like depression and this kind of really, I don't know, yucky kind of feeling that I don't know. I wouldn't want to feel it. She says, you could feel that? I said, yeah, I could feel that. She says, oh, I wish you couldn't feel that. Aw. Oh, of course a mother would want her child to feel that for her. Yeah. But, you know, what was amazing was that I realized that I was able to feel what other people were feeling. And... And I didn't know I could do that until that moment when I when I when I hugged my mom and realized, whoa, was that a feeling? <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. like it was like really huge for me. And and she thought, you know, oh nobody was no one ever noticed how I'm feeling. You know, my mother has gone, you know, moved past that since in her life. But at that time it was it was a very impactful moment for me and I think also for her. Well, is, yes, isn't it amazing? I mean, as an empath, you realize how much people are hiding, holding, embarrassed, humiliated, afraid to be transparent and honest with themselves and other people. Mm. They're walking around, in, you know, imprisoned in all these feelings and then acting as if everything's just fine. But yeah. an empath knows it's not <laughs> just fine. Um, yeah, and then there's this authenticity that I think that is so key that I really think that authenticity is something that we hide mm-hmm. and we don't allow it to show up. Authenticity is a power, and when we realize that it's a power, we will be more authentic more often. I agree with you totally, because when you know you're aligned with your word, your thought, your feeling, your grounding, your connection to spirit, it is really powerful. Absolutely. Well, I had a, I had a session with a lady many, many years ago. This is after the hypnosis center thing, but mm-hmm. when I owned, opened my own center, and I was, I was in uh, Virginia, and I uh, had this, this lady was supposed to come and do a session with me. And I had gotten um, really anxious that day. I mean, really, when I say it's bad, I mean, it was so bad that um, I wasn't functional, that kind of not so good, right? And when I was in that place, I'm like, I'm not going to be able to go through a session with this lady. I can't give her the best of me. I'm, I mean, what am I going to do? So I told my assistant to call her and cancel and to reschedule for a day where maybe I'm going to be okay. Mm-hmm. So anyway, as she was on the phone, the lady walks in early. <laughs> and then all I can say is, you know, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and so she came in, and I asked her to sit in my office, and she did, and I closed the door, and I took a breath. And I got into my body, and I walked into my office, and I sat in the chair, and I said, listen. I am not doing well today. I am feeling very anxious. I am literally out of my body and I am in a place where I don't think that I'm uh, functional for myself today. I just, it's just, 
you can tell I'm my, you know, my, 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 I don't have any color in my face. I look kind of like odd. And I said, I'm telling you this because I don't want you to think if I look like I'm in agony or <laughs> looking like I'm going crazy or freaking out here on my side, I want you to know that I'm totally fine and I'm going to be okay. And I'm also going to be with you throughout the entire process of what we're engaging. But I want you to know that, you know, if I look a little funny, just so you know what's going on. She said, okay, no problem. So I take her through this session that was outrageous. It was like amazing. And I'm taking her through the session and I'm kind of doing, I'm doing okay. I'm getting through. I'm guiding her. I'm um, you know, getting, getting into my ground as much as I can because I was popping in and out, honestly, because I wasn't, you know, I was good for a moment and then not good for the next, mm -hmm. and then good for a moment and not good for the next. It was, <laughs> you know, doing the best I could with what I knew at the time. And so I'm, you know, half freaking out and half okay, you know, that kind of thing. And I'm bringing her through the process, and she has this breakthrough in the moment. And at the end of the session, she says, Joshua, can we talk for a moment? And I'm like, yeah, I thought we were talking, but okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I thought, well, maybe if, is she mad at me? Am we in trouble or what? And she said, you taught me something today that I, that I never knew I needed to do with my own clients. I said, what do you mean? She said, you were so authentic with me. You let me know that you were like, okay and not okay, and that you were going to stay out of my way during my process, which you did, and you were going to assist me at the same time, which you did. And um, I transformed in like the most amazing way, she said. And then she said, but the authenticity that you came from, you were able to give me all of you, even though you felt you weren't there for yourself. You were totally there for me. And I need to be able to do that for my clients. She said, I hide so much from my clients. They come in, I'm not feeling well. I, I, I really like out to lunch and I don't say anything. I just try to hide it. And the more that I hide it, the worse that I feel. And the worse the session goes and it doesn't really work out well. And she said, but the way that you engage that with your authenticity changed everything. She said, I'll, I will, every time that I have a client and I'm not feeling well, they will know if I look funny or whatever, I'm still good. I'm still going to be with them. And she said, that was just amazing learning for her. Beautiful teaching oh, once again. Now, let me ask you this, Joshua. How do you experience your own field and your fields of light and high frequency because you definitely carry that energy and I'm just wondering how you tend it or what your practices are for kind of maintaining that high frequency energy. Yeah well first of all energy is energy so it's not like there's good energy and bad energy and energy kind of in the middle. There's <laughs> Energy is energy, and yes, there are, there's energies at different frequencies. But just because an energy is at one frequency doesn't mean that it couldn't be at an, another, another frequency in like a half a second, right? Mm -hmm. So the idea of energy just being energy and really not labeling it so much is the idea that the energy of, for example, depression could in, in a quick moment be at the frequency of love or higher. Mm -hmm. And so the energy of anxiety can be, or fear can be um, there for that moment, but it doesn't need to stay there. You can transmute that energy in the moment and have the energy be something else um, at a higher frequency like love or um, your, your most beautiful beingness. You can get to these levels pretty much instantly with uh, my work, Quantum Energy Transformation. So... When I work with energy for myself, I think what's different about what I do is I don't treat any kind of energy, low or high, as anything different than any other kind of energy. It's just energy, and it's just there. So how I work with a low frequency is the same as I would work with a high frequency. All of the energies are just energies. So when I shift and change a lower frequency energy, because that's the goal, right? You want to mm -hmm. eliminate the lower frequencies and have more of those higher frequencies, which is kind of interesting because in quantum energy transformation, where we go um, down 
before going up. So for example, when we, uh, when we get into our body, we're going down to root into the earth, right? Into the mm -hmm. root chakra. And so we do that for the understanding that rooting into the root chakra and going down to do that is going to, like a house, build your foundation. So that's, that's how you build a foundational energy is by rooting. You wouldn't want to start at the top of the house, which is like the crown chakra, right? Which I can't tell you how many processes and how many people do this, but, and I have no idea why. It doesn't make any sense to me, but okay. Everybody's right. teaching their own, but I see it all the time. Uh, that's the same teaching I have too. I'm telling you, we've got the same guides coming on here. So keep, keep on going here. Yes. So <laughs> we, so we, we, get, we, we build the foundation of the energy so that you have a strong foundation to work from. Mm -hmm. uh, so that your house or your body, right, um, is strong and secure. And the neat thing about using your root chakra, and it's not that there's a rule about it, so just, just, a, just a perspective um, change here. Yoga and other modalities tend to use the second chakra, not the root chakra. Mm -hmm. But when you, so the second chakra in, in yoga, for example, needs to be strengthened in order for you to access the strength of it. So when you first start yoga, you're not strong enough to be able to use your second chakra to get the ground you need. But when you use the root chakra at the base of the spine, you can access your, uh, you can immediately access the strength of your root chakra now. You don't have to go and do yoga for, you know, three years it usually takes for someone to get a strong second chakra. So you don't have to go through that process to just instantly now have it. And if you use, now for me, I had to learn to use the earth core chakra because my root chakra was weak at the time. But when I use my earth core chakra, here's the cool thing. When you use the earth core chakra, which is actually directly connected to the soul star chakra, mm -hmm. all of your chakras actually can work together to help you. Mm -hmm. So the way that I got my ground was actually going lower into the earth core chakra, which connected to the soul star chakra, where all the chakras work together to ground me so that I learn to ground from an all chakra perspective instead of using just the root chakra because the root chakra at that time in my life when I really had no ground <laughs> was because my, was, it was weak. It wasn't a strong chakra for me at the time. So I had to strengthen that. So I learned to strengthen the root chakra through time. But all of your chakras are meant to work together as a unit together to assist you with things. So um, when we go down to the root chakra to create that ground, it stabilizes the body and gives you that nice foundation. Then you can use any of the other chakras or any of the other energy centers um, that you'd like to use to create whatever it is that you're looking to shift. And the way that I do that with quantum energy transformation is to get energy in the body to move. And the body, for example, is what I would call the unconscious mind. And so the unconscious mind, if that's the body, that's the cellular structure. And the cellular structure has the ability to create shifts and changes um, at the cellular level. And when you move the energy at that level, you start achieving results um, because you're, you're taking the low-level energies and you're raising them to high-level energies instantly. And when you do, the body um, fills in the part that you released with, with what you need. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's an automatic thing. Your body, I'm sure you've heard the idea that um, if you let something go, you need to fill it in with something else. But the way that we work with the root chakra in this case, the uh, higher self and, um, and the energy just knows exactly what to fill it with. So you don't have to worry about that part, which is nice. Mm-hmm. So this is going to lead us right into 
uh, your offer to lead us through a little experience here on the podcast so that the sure. listeners can experience their higher frequencies and the love that surrounds them. Can we go there now? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Did you want me to go and um, talk about the special offer or do the exercise first? Actually, let's talk about the special offer because once people feel the energy, they may not be tuned in with the regular mind. <laughs> they might be like, woo, this is too good. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> good good idea. <laughs> We're so good together, by the way. We, we are. <laughs> I'm telling you, we came from the same planet. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so you'll go to overwhelmfreedom.com. You don't have to put anything in, no WWs or anything. Just type it in, overwhelmfreedom.com, and it will go to the page. And it will take you to this really neat um, opportunity to get this free healing audio called Let Go of Overload and Overwhelm. It's a whole body transformation experience for empaths and intuitives. And what it's going to do is it's going to help you let go of the overwhelm. Remember I said earlier that we're all bringing in energy from everywhere, even places you haven't even, don't even know it's coming from. And when it comes into your system, it can be pretty overwhelming because you think it's the the circumstance that you're in, but it's, it's, that might be adding to the situation, but it's always happening that you're bringing in information that you don't even know you're bringing in. And there's so much, you can't keep track of it all yet as an empath. You can, you can learn to hone this skill. But the first thing for an empath is to let go and release those energies that are causing that overwhelm because it's difficult to function when things are, are going um, over the top all the time. So we want to find that beautiful, sweet spot of confident and unstoppable and feeling really calm at the same time. Our true, our true state of beingness is not to be relaxed. I know we, we learned that in we, we learned that in lots of modalities that relaxation is where it is. It isn't there. It is being relaxed and energized at the same time. That's mm -hmm. where we're supposed to be all the time. Yes. We're supposed to be in a relaxation but have all the energy we need, right? That's where we're supposed to be. So I can take you through an exercise that will do exactly that. Wonderful. And I will have the information for the attunement um, the, from from Joshua in the podcast notes. So don't worry about that. You can check back there and access his information. So let's do it, Joshua. So I'm going to take you through a process that I just love because it has to do with taking the negative stuff, the things that are the lower energy frequencies, and pushing them down and out of you and getting them to be um, absorbed by the earth and allowing you to rise above it, to not be in that energy. The, the place that this happens the most is with what I call um, negative thoughts. And what happens with negative thoughts is they have a mind of their own. <laughs> Don't they? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't they? they just, you know, you have one negative thought, and wow, there's another one, another one, another one, another one, and now, now they're coming in triplicate. You know, they don't even need to come one at a time anymore. <laughs> they know how to get you. They, and then you think of this, and you're like, whoa, wait a second, I can't even keep track of these negative thoughts. And then all of a sudden, you don't even hear the negative thought anymore. You just feel the energy of it. So now you just feel like crap. I mean, basically, right. that's what happens. So then you're like, whoa, you know what? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't buy into this. This is not what I came for. So the, the thing about this is that we want to get into that place where we are in our body, where we're connected to ourselves and we're energized and relaxed at the same time. And at the same time, when we have negative thoughts, um, it's difficult to move through our life. And I just want to say one thing before I do the exercise about negative thoughts. If you think about a negative um, thought or a feeling, we'll call that depression. If you have that negative um, experience and you rise above 
into a higher frequency energy, which is different than attention, because before we talked about putting our attention at the base of our spine, which we're going to do in a minute. But the idea is if you rise above with your higher frequency, then you're at a different level than where the depression lives. So if you're at that higher level where depression doesn't live, um, you might be able to look down and see the depression, but you're not going to feel it anymore because it's not on the level that you're at. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to move our higher energy to go higher and higher and higher, and we're going to move the lower energy frequencies down into the earth, and then we're going to you know, wave at them maybe at the top if we like, but we're going to move them down so that we're going to separate you from the negative energy, and we're going to raise your energy frequency at the same time, and at the same time, we're going to allow your body to have a whole new experience, because this is going to be a physical, emotional, and energetic experience all at the same time. So, are you ready? We're ready. So, stand up, and this time, when we're standing up, what I'd like you to do is I would like you to... Put your awareness under your feet. Now, I like to think of it of, as stepping on my awareness, <laughs> okay? Mm. So um, the way that, the easy way to do this is to recognize that you can feel your feet or your shoes touching the floor. That's, if you're standing, that's very difficult not to feel that. So you're feeling your feet or your shoes touching the floor, and you just put your attention there where your feet or shoes are touching the floor. It's really easy, actually. And when you do that, it feels good <laughs> to connect that way. Mm -hmm. So while you're connecting by putting your awareness under your feet, we're going to do two types of breaths. The first type of breath is going to be breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. And when you breathe out of your mouth, you're going to make a noise like this. <sighs> okay? The noisier, the better. better. I don't know why. It just works better noisy. So noisy out breath. In through the nose and out noisy out breath. So then the second breath we're going to do is what I call a candle breath, where you're going to breathe in any way you want, in through your nose and through your mouth, it doesn't matter, and you're going to do a hard, short, out, uh, like you're blowing out the candles of a birthday cake. So you're going to go like, like that. Okay, you're going to let it out so you can get the wind out of your mouth to blow out those candles, right? So that's called a candle breath. And then we're going to do um, a series of those. So those are the two breaths we're going to do. The key in this experience is to keep your awareness under your feet the whole time. Basically, just feel your feet or your shoes touching the floor, and that's all you have to do. Okay, so now, just imagine that you're standing on a pedestal. And this pedestal is electronic, so it can actually raise, which it's going to do. It's going to rise you above the negative thoughts or the negative feelings that you experience inside of you. And you're going to allow that um, pedestal to start to move now. So allow it to move now as it rises you up, 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 still keeping your uh, awareness under your feet. As, it, as you feel it lifting you, lifting you, you can close your eyes and you'll feel it lifting you even easier. And as you let it lift and lift you and lift you and lift you and lift, the, lift you, you're going to push down the negative energy right in front of you with your hands. You're going to push it down, push it down, push it down so it goes below your feet. So as you're being pushed up in the air, the energy is being pushed down. And now we're going to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. Let's do that four more times. And on your out breath, push that energy down. Push that energy down. Push that negative energy down, and one more time. Push that negative energy down. Feel that pedestal just lifting you up in the air as if you were a trapeze artist, right? And you're just going to do some candle breaths now, breathing in and out and in and out. Let's do five of those. One, two, three, four, five. And just keep breathing nice and easy and normally. And just breathe, though. And just keep your awareness under your feet now while you're on that pedestal. And just imagine that the floor meets the pedestal so you're at the same height as the floor now. And you just take a step forward and walk. And I want you to notice how you feel differently in your body now. 
you should easily feel taller as if your spine had a chiropractic adjustment. You should feel that you've, you should feel like you're really much taller than before, that you're um, maybe even feeling confident or even unstoppable with your energy. You should feel cold, possibly, or hot, depending on, <laughs> depending. You can feel either one or both. I kind of feel both right now. Um, and you can see, you should probably feel um, this like energy of confidence washing over you as if you um, just had the energy you needed but felt relaxed at the same time. So what are you feeling? Really nicely balanced and really nicely grounded. Mm. Solid. Good. Do you feel taller at all? Of course, I do. <laughs> Good. And I like, I like when I walk because it feels like when I'm walking, I feel like I'm just um i don't know it just feels like like the room got shorter <laughs> i definitely feel the lengthening of my energy field and the energy holding my spine up and holding my body up yeah and the sol like solid base it. yes yeah so this is the start of quantum energy transformation where you can shift the perspective of the energy that you have in your body so that you are now in charge instead of the victim of what's happening. And from this place, now we can really make some change. <laughs> That's my favorite. This is wonderful. Thank you so much, Joshua, for your generosity and your, your beautiful nature and your happiness and joy. It's a wonderful time of year to share this with everyone. Um, is there anything else you'd like to tell uh, the listeners about your programs right now? Sure, you know, it is so powerful to realize that you can shift the energy at the root of whatever is causing you not to feel your greatest, right? And you can take your life to another level of possibility. And quantum is all about the study of possibility. So allow yourself to study possibility and create those possibilities that you consider, those dreams that you've always wanted to change and allow them to become your reality. Oh. Become a person who no longer requires those issues and problems that you have been experiencing and allow yourself to live your greatest life because you can, because you can. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And the, all the information for contacting Joshua is in the podcast notes. And we are very grateful for your presence with us today, Joshua. Many, many blessings to you and everyone listening. Thank you so much for having me. I, feel like, I do feel like we're kindred spirits. And I also feel a deep connection to you and your audience. This has been a blast. So thank you for inviting me. You're very welcome. Blessings, everyone. Thanks for listening to the Earth Love Spirit Podcast. If you like what you heard, the best compliment you can give us is to share this podcast with a friend. And be sure to give us some stars and a favorable review at Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen in.